Imagine this, you're sipping from your go-to bottled water, but did you know it might be packed with invisible nanoplastics, tiny enough to rival viruses? With studies linking these particles to health risks, you've got to wonder, what's in the water we drink? Diving into the world of nanoplastics feels a bit like exploring a microscopic universe where tiny particles, invisible to the naked eye, play a massive role in the narrative of modern environmental concerns. Nanoplastics, these minuscule fragments, are defined as plastic particles smaller than 100 nanometers. To put that in a relatable context, imagine a virus, something so tiny it's a speck on the edge of perception. With sizes ranging from 20 to 300 nanometers, nanoplastics can be as small, if not smaller, than these microscopic invaders, making them a sneaky presence in places we'd least expect, like in the bottled water we sip daily. So, how do these tiny trespassers end up in our bottled water? It's a journey that begins with the degradation of larger plastic items. Picture this, plastic bottles, bags, and packaging under the duress of sunlight wear and tear or the relentless churning of ocean waves, breaking down into smaller fragments. Over time, these fragments reach nanoplastic dimensions. The story doesn't end there though. During the manufacturing and bottling process, nanoplastics can sneak into the water, courtesy of the very containers designed to hold them. Plus, given their prevalence in the environment, nanoplastics find myriad pathways into water sources transcending beyond just the degradation of consumer products and a broader issue tied to our global reliance on plastics. This infiltration into bottled water underscores a silent but glaring reflection of our environmental footprint, spotlighting the urgent need to rethink our plastic use and its far-reaching implications on health and the planet. As highlighted in studies like those published in The Lancet and others, imagine these nanoplastics no bigger than some viruses, silently slipping into our bodies, potentially wreaking havoc from the inside out. Researchers are sounding the alarm on a variety of health risks, including stress, inflammation, immune system dysfunction, altered metabolism, bizarre organ development, and even an increased risk of cancer. It's like these nanoplastics throw a wrench into the complex machinery of our bodily functions, disrupting processes that we rely on for health and well-being. But how exactly do these microplastic particles do their damage? At the cellular level, nanoplastics can act like unwelcome guests that our body can't manage to evict. They can interfere with the normal functioning of cells, leading to stress responses that shouldn't be happening. There's concerns that nanoplastics could carry harmful bacteria into our digestive systems. This isn't just about physical irritation, it's about potentially introducing pathogens into places they have no business being, like a Trojan horse sneaking enemies past the gates. The unsettling reality is that these nanoplastics traverse our bodies. They could lay the groundwork for long-term health problems. When it comes to the dance between regulatory frameworks and the bottled water industry, it's a complex tango, especially in the face of the nanoplastics conundrum. Current regulations on bottled water safety are like a patchwork quilt, varying significantly from one region to another. With most focusing on chemical contaminants, microbiological safety, and labeling standards. The issue? Well, this regulatory net is finely woven to catch the bigger fish, so to speak but it's not quite fine enough to catch the minuscule yet potentially problematic nanoplastics. It's like setting out to filter leaves from a pool without considering the grains of sand. The existing rules just aren't equipped to address a nuanced challenge of nanoplastic contamination head on. On the flip side, the response from the bottled water industry to the nanoplastic revelations could be more varied. Some companies are stepping up investing in advanced filtration technologies and more rigorous testing methods to assure consumers of the purity of their water. They're like the diligent students in class, always striving to exceed the standards. However, there's a spectrum of commitment across the industry, with others seemingly waiting in the wings, hoping for more definitive research or clearer regulatory guidance before making significant changes. 
This mixed bag of industry practices reflects a broader uncertainty and debate over the true impact of nanoplastics on health, and how best to tackle their presence in our bottled water. It's a narrative that's still unfolding, with each player from regulators to industry giants, scripting their part in real time, underscoring a collective journey towards understanding and mitigating the invisible threat of nanoplastics. Tackling the nanoplastic issue is like embarking on a multifaceted quest, with paths that span from the individual level to the lofty realms of technological innovation and policy reform. For starters, on a personal level, we can all play a part in this narrative by making mindful choices. Think about opting for a reusable water bottle instead of grabbing a single-use plastic one. It's a simple switch with a ripple effect. Then there's the move towards installing water filtration systems at home, which is akin to setting up your own personal guard against unwanted microscopic invaders. While seemingly small, these steps collectively contribute to a larger battle against plastic pollution and its unseen nanoplastic offspring. Venturing into the realm of technological innovations, there's a beacon of hope with advancements in water filtering and cleaning technologies. Scientists and engineers are on the front lines, developing filters that can catch these tiny trespassers, ensuring that the water that we drink is as clean as it gets. It's an ongoing saga of innovation where each breakthrough brings us closer to minimizing our exposure to nanoplastics. The call to action is clear on the policy front. We need a tighter grip on plastic production and waste management. This means crafting laws and regulations that curb the proliferation of plastics and ensure their end of life doesn't contribute to the nanoplastic problem. While the scientific community is still connecting the dots between nanoplastic consumption and health outcomes, anecdotal evidence and preliminary case studies are beginning to sketch a picture that's hard to ignore. For instance, let's talk about a study where researchers found that animals exposed to high levels of nanoplastics showed signs of stress, inflammation, and even changes in their metabolic processes. It's like watching a silent movie where the effects slowly unfold, revealing a timeline filled with unintended consequences. Another compelling narrative comes from communities living near heavily polluted water bodies. Here, people have reported higher instances of health issues, which, while not directly traced back to nanoplastics yet, raises eyebrows and questions about the invisible risks lurking in their environment. Then there are the researchers who are piecing together how nanoplastics might journey through the body, potentially crossing barriers we once thought impervious, reaching places like the liver, kidneys, or even the brain. It's as if these tiny particles are on a covert mission slipping past the body's defenses and leaving us wondering about their long-term impacts. While direct cause and effect relationships between nanoplastic exposure and specific health outcomes in humans are still under investigation, these case studies and anecdotal reports serve as crucial puzzle pieces. They underscore the urgent need for more comprehensive research to understand the full spectrum of nanoplastics' real-world implications on health. For more videos, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Comment down below what your thoughts are.